Hello everyone, this is Raven Ironwing and welcome to my channel. Today we will be doing Coffee Lesson 4. If you haven't seen Lessons 1 through 3, I advise you to check those out first. Alright, today we will be talking about the Swadesh List. And we will be going over the Swadesh List translated into Coffee. So what is a Swadesh List? The original Swadesh List was created by the American Morris Swadesh who specialized in comparative linguistics, and it has since been revised many times. So why does the Swadesh list contain the words that it does? The words on the Swadesh list were chosen because of their universal availability in as many languages as possible. So the Swadesh list is not necessarily a good list to memorize if you're learning a new language, but it is a very useful list when we are comparing various languages to one another, because many languages have these words in them. Alright, so what is a Swadesh list in Kothi? Well, there are a lot of different Swadesh lists. I decided to go with the 207 list, and I will show you every word on this list in Kothi. And there will be a link down in the description so you can go through all of these individually. But in today's video, I'm not going to read you the entire list because that would be kind of boring. But we will go over some examples. Of course, the the words I and you are on there. Um, from our last video, we should remember those. We is I. Um, you is se. If we're talking about you plural, then we pluralize that with ah, so it's ah se. All right, um, words like here, we've already covered those. Those are directly translated using one Kothi character, or. Um, so some words, it just takes one character. Others, like how, will combine two different uh, characters. So for the word how, we have the character I, and remember I is the question word, it means it's a question, and then b meaning to do. So ib means question do. And that's how we say how. So when is ie or question time. Um, where is h question place. And what is ip which means question thing. Who also ip because pe means they as in a person, or it could be a thing, an existing object. So, I pay um, can mean who or what. And you have to really interpret that depending on the context. <clears throat> Alright, let's look at some other words. Counting is kind of an interesting one. The coffee word for numbers, the coffee words for numbers. The number four is oov, which means the quality of a four-legged creature. Because creatures with four legs have four legs. So oov is the number four. For five, we have hab, which literally means hand, because we have five fingers on our hands. And then there's some descriptive words that I had to get a bit creative with. So the word long, um, I used I, which means much path, and wide is ao eo, which means more here to here. So these are the words that I struggled with the most, these these descriptive words that relate to the size of objects. But after giving it some thought, I came up with ways of describing them, I think, fairly accurately using the Kothi characters. The word for woman is fairly simple. It's heifu, which literally means human with internal genitalia. The word for man is <clears throat> fuhe, which literally, literally means external sex person. Now, in coffee, you have to realize that there's no... 
There's no association to gender identity when we're talking about the words man and woman like there is in English and modern culture. These are just simply words stating a person with internal sexual anatomy and a person with external sexual anatomy because there aren't so many sexed words like there are in English and romance languages. There aren't gendered pronouns because that's not really necessary. But if you have to specify whether someone has internal or external organs for reproductive um, purposes or for, you know, doctor's visits or whatever, then we have these words. The word hey for and for hey. <clears throat> and the word for human being is hey, which simply means breathing one. So child is we hey, which means new human. And the word for wife, you know, there are a lot of different ways of saying your romantic partner in Kothi. Um, so this is like the literal translation to someone that's close to you that is of the female sex that you're romantic with. So that would be... For hey for, which literally means romantically close, close person, that is a woman. <clears throat> and husband, basically the same, but it's a person of an external sex that's your a human mate. Um, the word for animal is vud, it's simply a creature that moves. And remember the uh is just the, the norm. We could talk about a larger animal by saying vad, or a smaller animal by saying vid. So fish, here's an example of a small fish. It would be videsh, which means a small creature that moves through the water. Or a bird would be javad. So javad would be like a, a normal sized bird, but you could say javid, which should be a small bird or a small flying creature. Um, so this is kind of, it's not, Kothi is not a very specific language unless you make it very specific. So you could use the word, the word javid to describe a bird that's small, like a hummingbird. But you could also use the word javid to describe a small flying insect as well. So you don't have to make that distinction unless it's necessary to make that distinction for context. And you can add more distinctive words to make that distinction. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about Kothi, that you can be a lot more general when you're talking about things and understand what you're talking about through context. But it's also one of Kothi's downfalls in that to be very specific, like one of the words on this, the Swadesh list is Laos. It's kind of a specific um, creature. So we have to be a lot more specific and use a lot more sounds to describe it. So to describe a Laos, Evid Tehash. So Evid Tehash means small, like a very tiny creature, a small, small animal that eats by way of blood. Evid tehash. So tehash means it consumes by way of hash is blood. Hash literally means life water. And the word for snake is literally translated to no legs animal. <clears throat> And it is Kha David. The word for flower literally means reproductive part of a plant, which I think is fairly accurate. So Fiyav is flower. Fiyav. And it takes my mind a bit of um I'm dyslexic, so it takes my mind a bit to transition between reading Kothi and reading English, but it's not that I'm not good at either. Um, it's just the way my brain works. Okay, grass. Um, small earth plant. 
So we have ya meaning light and ver, so ya ver, ya ver, ya ver. Um, so the word for plant in Kothi is yav, the general word for plant, yav, which literally means it's a creature, a light creature, because um, plants use light to get the energy. They are creatures that rely on light. So yav is plant, yavir is a plant that grows in the earth that is tiny, because we use that i. But if we had an ah sound, that would make the creature larger, so yavar would be something like a tree. Like we see here, yavar. So, going through the Swadesh list, you see all these all these words, and I feel like I did a fairly good job translating these into Kothi in a way that makes sense. So, the reason why I put this list together is just to show you so many different examples of how you can use a dynamic language like Kothi to dynamically create words that exist in other languages without very much restriction, in a way that you can interpret those words and understand them just by memorizing those base 42 phonemes. Now, it takes some time to learn the decoding process and to learn the encoding process, and I expect this is something that you'd have to practice communicating with other people. Now, as far as I know, I'm the only person on this earth that really speaks the language to a point that I can, you know, talk it I can speak it. Um, I would like that to change soon. It would be nice to be able to have conversations in this language, just really see how this dynamic decoding and encoding process goes. So I would challenge you all to try out learning the words on the Swadesh list, and if you don't like the way I decided to describe these using the base phonemes and the base pictographs, then give me some better recommendations. I would love to hear your recommendations in the comment section below, and let me know what you think about it. Anyway, I won't go through any more of this list other than showing you the list briefly, and I will have more videos on coffee in the near future. Sorry it's taken me so long to get this video out. I had the Swadesh list done a month ago, but I got really sick with a nasty cold and I sounded like a toad more than usual when I spoke, so I didn't feel like making a video until now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content and are curious about conlangs and other things I've provided on this channel, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell if you would like to see more in the future and get notifications. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.